Good morning. The pardon board is called to order. Today is February the 13th, 2023. Uh, the time is 8.37 a.m. Could we get a roll call, please? Chair Robinson. Present. Adam Oshie. Present. Bobby Jackson. Here. Tom Maribel. Here. Present. All right, thank you. All members of the board are present, so we do have a quorum. Uh, our first item on the under regular business is review and approval of the minutes from our Monday, January 9th, 2023 regular meeting. Uh, those minutes are in your packets. Are there any corrections? Madam Chairman, I have reviewed the minutes January 9th, 2023. All the information included in those minutes are correct. And I'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes without correction. I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Roche, a second by Mrs. Jackson to approve the minutes from Monday, January 9th, 2023. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Thank you. So we'll move right into consideration of applications for clemency. And we have our first case here this morning with us. Mr. Cage, would you introduce yourself to the board? Tell us your name and what's your current mailing address, please. Yes, my name is Harrison Cage. My address is 480 U.S. Stop, New York, Spain Road, 779. Okay. So, being a partner with restoration of firearms. Uh, Mr. Cage, you were sentenced in April of 1993 to a life sentence for our second degree murder conviction. That sentence was commuted in January of 2016 to 60 years, and you were paroled in April of 2016. You have a full term date, September 2052. Does all that sound correct to you? Your case this morning has been assigned to Mr. Marabella, seated to my right, and you're answering his question. Good morning, Mr. Cage. Can you hear me okay? Mr. Cage, how old are you, sir? Thank you. Mr. Cage, tell me uh, what you're doing now. Tell me what kind of work you're doing now. And, uh... Well, um, I'm an overhead company operator. And I also have my own business. Uh, on let, let's let's talk about the crime that you committed that you went to prison for. Uh, initially, uh, there was a different story, but I see in your application you admitted to what you did. So why don't you tell me just a little bit about what actually happened? Well, well being, being young and going to hang with wrong people, not getting brought up that way, got um, caught up in, in drugs and drug deal went bad and. My nephew uh, wound up getting killed. Well, how did he end up getting killed? Because he was stabbed. He was stabbed. I did. How did that come about? Because we got into an argument about money over the over drug. So there weren't two other guys that beat him up or anything like you? There was two other guys there. But they weren't involved in his killing? They, they, they was. No one never. Who did the stabbing? I did, Mr. Harrison, uh, Mr. Gage, I mean, I'm sorry, you have two last names. <laughs> uh, in your application, you indicated that you had been convicted previously of cocaine charges, but you don't mention anything about the attempted murder charge, and I realize you were acquitted for that, and I understand that. What were the facts of that case? Why were you arrested for that charge? On, on attempted murder Yes, sir. It was back in uh, hang on. I thought I had it dated in my notes, but I didn't. Can you set your each? Here it is right here. Uh, in 1982, you were arrested for accessory after the fact of attempted second degree murder. Okay. You were found not guilty. What were the facts of that case? I was at my sister's house, and my sister had altercated with some other lady. She um, stabbed her in the shoulder or something. I was there, but 
But I had, I didn't have anything to do with that. They did arrest me and nothing else come out. I never had to go back to uh, court or nothing on that. But I was there with her. I was at the house, but I didn't have anything. Okay, that. well, the disposition suggests not guilty, which makes me think it went to trial and you were found not guilty. No, I never went to court. All right. Okay. What about the vehicular negligent injury charge? That would have been in 1986. Uh, don't have any information. You were arrested on May 31st of 1986 for vehicular negligent injury. I don't have any more information other than that's on your rap sheet. And it says uh, disposition, fine, no additional information found. Pending charge, no. What were the facts of that case? Do you remember that? I don't remember all of that. That could be. I had a wreck way back. But no, I don't, I don't recall that. Tell me about the possession of cocaine charge. What was that about? I was in the area, and at that time, that they um, the attempt possession, and they, I knew they were out the end. They, mm -hmm. they walked up to me. And they asked me, but I never, I never had. They said I intend, I intended to uh, possess cocaine at that time. I didn't, I didn't. Did you plead guilty? Yes, I did. Why did you say that was in my best interest? So tell me why it is. And how long have you been out? I've been out eight or seven years. Seven years. Yes, sir. Uh, why is it that you need a pardon? What has prohibited you from doing the things you need to do to get a pardon? Well, a lot of places that I could go that I can't go. Uh, I like to travel with my wife and we can't, you know, I can't get a passport or anything. I feel like when my sister and I are so close, we, we like to go places and do things that it restricts you from doing nothing. Well, the, the sentence under which you got, life sentence, you got out pretty quickly. That's a good thing. Uh, and you've only been out about six years. You've got a lot of supervision ahead of you, and you've only been out six or seven years. I'm a little uncomfortable, frankly. Uh, I'd like to see a little more time pass. What, what, what might you say to me other than you want to travel that might convince me, well, this man needs a pardon today for a lot of really good, valid reasons, rather than waiting a little longer to make sure everything's going to work out okay. Well, first of all, I, the stuff I submitted to you and the people that I know and stuff that I'm doing, I don't think that I'm too much more I can do to, to show you that I would be productive by and I can live a successful life. That, that, I, I like that, 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 is, that is true. But often this board likes to see a significant amount of time pass after a person is out of prison before they're pardoned. In a very short period of time for a life sentence has passed since you've gone out. And that's a concern to me. So my, my question is, I, I don't doubt that you've got a lot of people that say you've done a lot of good things in the last six years. My question is, what is so urgent that it can't wait for another four or five years before you get your part. Oh, I'm not saying that it can't. The idea that I'd like to have some restrictions off me. And so again, the, hopefully in the future, I could just wind and go about it. Because at some point in my heart and my sister, we would have died to let us put this behind us very somewhere. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mandela. See no other questions from our colleagues. We have Ms. Leola Cage here this morning. Who's indicated she'd like to speak on her husband's behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Standing up this morning, speaking on my husband's behalf because. Not or I know he, he to me he said he he has been re rehabilitated from the years gone. He's a different man. Um he's a Christian. We I didn't mean, know him since I was 15 years old. So we've been on each other like 42 years, really. 
So um, he's a great husband to me, you know, and not only a husband, he's a great father to his son as well as my, my children. And he's also a caretaker um, for, for, for our pastor. He sits back over weekend. He came blind and crippled at the same time. So we take a lot of he, my husband do a lot of caring for him, taking him around different places, doing this and whatever he needs to do. So we we are there to help him and care for him. And not only that, that he's a he was ordained as a deacon last year. Yeah, last year. So he's ordained deacon with ever, ever since he came home. And we got married. He came home in April, and we got married in September of 2016. So we've been married for it'll be seven years this this coming season. So he joined my church. Uh, we got to church at Denham, and he was acting as a deacon, and he got a name last year as a deacon. And like I said, he have grown from the time that 20 some years ago up until today. Into the man that I think is perfect man outside of God, <laughs> you know. So I I need him, you know, and it's not just for challenging, but I think that he should be granted this uh, communication, communication for other purposes where he could just move on with his life. He mentors a group of young boys from time to time. Uh, my grandson is born. Uh, a whole lot of other people within our church and outside of our church, they normally call me to get to him so he can give him some type of counsel, you know. So, <laughs> so he's a counselor, you know, he's a Sunday school teacher, he's a Bible study teacher, you know, on, on top of being a deacon and a great husband. He is. So I just hope and pray that y'all sit here today to grant him a communication. Services. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't have any indication that anybody else wants to speak on his behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. I'm Rolf Bowser. I'm chairwoman of the Jackson. This is the first time I've ever been before the board and uh, you know, Harrison. And uh, I've I know Harrison, but he was uh, working with Irene here and other people in the region. <clears throat> then, of course, looking long before he got out, he was, you know, we you know the government has one person that they can elect. And so I uh, spoke a lot with Harrison. And I've got to know him since when he got out. I said, hey, look, what can I do to help you? And uh, so he did work, good job. So we got involved in uh, Tom Berger on hiring and started working catering. We then Eric Lane hired him, did two jobs. And uh, then after that, he got an offer of JP to do later. Uh, Pepe Pike, who was in there for years, he did a great job. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, I know he was ordained last year. And stuff. So I've got to be going out socially. Uh, in here in town, I've taken with me a business seminar that said we business board is done. And uh, because I just I believe him. I think his uh, path, I understand uh, the sense he has, I understand the idea of time. I believe if it's not today, and I hope that it is two years, four years, six years, I'll be back, say the same thing. I sit there and I think he'll have even more accomplishments at uh, that time. So I don't think that today to then I think will change. Uh, like I said, I've never come and spoken to anybody uh, before, and uh, I just know what I've seen uh, in that time. I know his heart, and uh, I would, uh, as I said in my letter, ask that you uh, to consider bringing to this uh, just today. Appreciate the chance to speak. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, um, is there anything you'd like to say before we go? No, I'd just like to say, um, thank you all for the opportunity. And I do, I'm ready to get my new heart. But 
I do understand. Not going to change anything. I will go forward. Sir, stay right there. We're ready to vote, Mr. Uh, Mr. Thank you uh, very much, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Cage, uh, you've done well. Uh, you know, uh, this board has a responsibility to do things. We have policies and procedures. We have uh, uh, some policies that are unwritten, and, and some individual board members live by some of those policies. And one of those policies, to me, is a cleansing period. Uh, you know, we have many people who uh, come for uh, commutations who are still in prison or murder who've been in prison 30 plus years. Uh, your crime was only 32 years ago. Uh, so, uh, you know, and you've been able, you've been out for six years now and you've done well. You, you have done well. And, and I believe probably uh, you will continue. I have a lot of respect for Mr. McCollister. He gets up here and he talks on your behalf, and I believe him. Uh, but, but for me, because of, of, of what I believe my responsibility is on this board, and what I believe the policy that I, I, I try to follow in all of the cases, I just don't think there's been a long enough cleansing period. Uh, I think in, in a couple of years, if you come back this board and I'm still on this board for some reason, I would probably vote. But, but today, because my belief, because my, my thinking that it's just not enough cleansing period, my vote today would be to deny. It doesn't mean you weren't doing fantastic. It doesn't mean that I hope you continue doing what you're doing. It's just my, my vote. Good luck to you. Mr. Freeman? Uh, I concur with Mr. Maribel. I think we need a little bit more time. I, I agree that you're doing wonderful, but um, like he says, 32 years ago, and you already got one commutation, so my vote would be the time. Mrs. Jackson? Mr. Excuse me, I don't anticipate that we're going to go out and start being farms. Anticipate that we're going to do anything differently than we've done over the last almost seven years. Uh, and as Ms. Mayor Bella says, some of us, you know, have have our way of, of viewing things. Um, but I mean. Seven years is, is a long time. It is a, it is a track record. You have done exceptionally well. And fractions of any sort, you move forward with your life. And so um, I vote today with you to grant uh, your um, request and let them in the party without the right to possess the party. Thank you. Mr. Roche. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Cage. I too uh, would like to see a longer period of time, a cleansing period. Uh, you know, this for uh, the last seven years is sort of a rule of thumb that we see a cleansing period of at least eight to ten years. And we haven't reached that point yet. So my vote is to deny your request. Thank you, Mr. Rache. So you've got a split vote. You know it takes four light votes for any favorable recommendation. So you've received four votes to deny your application this morning. One vote that was favorable. So the outcome of today's proceedings, your application has been denied. Good luck to you, Mr. Cage. Thank you, sir. Thank, so Thank you all for coming. Reapply in a couple of years. Uh, yeah, there's a few things here. I mean, one is the Mr. Mirabella gave him a chance over and over again, like, tell us why it is that you want to get the part. And he said, well, we want to travel, we want to put it behind us. And, you know, they were looking for a more substan substantive reason, getting a job or something like that. But um, he was formerly the uh, butler for the governor for 16 years in the governor's mansion. And... He uh, he was a trustee and everything, and that certainly helps with getting a pardon. 
um, or getting a commutation. He had a life sentence and he got out after serving just 24 years. He killed his nephew who was 19 years old. He stabbed him to death. I'll put the article in the description. And then um, he denied doing it. He went to court. He filed appeals. He like, it seems never really took accountability, which is um, he even had appeals that I believe were active at the time of his um, appeal process, at the time of his hearing. But, and then even when they spoke to him now, it took like three questions for him to admit it. They said, oh, well, tell us what happened. Well, he, he got stabbed. Well, who stabbed him? Oh, I, I did. It was like, uh, frankly, just concerning, really concerning to me. Um, like that he's, you know, I, and then they go into his other history and he was involved in some way in another murder. But it, but then, but he wasn't convicted. I, I mean, how does that happen? And then the vehicle injury thing, which I guess could technically be a bunch of different things, but it was definitely, I think, the least impressive uh, um, pardon hearing that that I've uh, seen. Um, and uh, from from really every angle, every every count of it. Um, Yeah, well, I'm glad with the parole board's decision here. That's for sure. And um, love to hear your thoughts on this. But with that, I'll let you go.